All right, we're going to discuss creating our own functions. So I am using the example from chapter six on page 177. And I pulled the example file right off of the class website. And it's under the CD-ROM files. Um, I'm using Toyball Roll version two. And if you look under module eight, you will find the folder CD-ROM files and you can download the example from right there. So that's what I'm looking at right here. And basically uh, in this example we have a ball that moves and we want to make it roll realistically. So let me play that. Let me play that again. And you can see it it's sort of right it's not quite right so we're going to try to make that better and the way we're going to do that is by creating a function and what we want to do when we're looking at how this ball is actually rolling is um, the width of the ball and how far it goes is going to determine how many times it should turn okay so there's a formula for that on page 177 and what we're going to do is build a function to compute that formula based on the ball's width and how far it moves. So what we are going to do is we will go into uh, our realistic roll method. And right now you can see that this turn that we have happening is based on a revolution of one. Okay, so it is, it is basically turning uh, one revolution um, as it moves forward. And what we want to do is make that more precise. So we're going to use a function. We're going to select our toy ball object. We're going to go to the functions tab. And we are going to say create new function. And we are going to name this function number of revolutions. And this function is going to deal with uh, numbers. So we'll leave the type as number and we'll say OK. Okay, so here is our uh, new function that we just created. You can see that it shows up here under the functions tab at the top. And it has set a return value of one. So if all we did right now is just call, if we called this function the way it is, it would return a value of one. Okay, we'd get a number one back. What we wanna do is be able to tell this function how far the ball is gonna move and for it to tell us how many times the ball should turn. And so the way that we send information to a function is using a parameter. So I'm going to say create new parameter. We want to use uh, a number type. And this parameter is going to be called distance because this is how far our ball is moving. Okay, And you can see that now this function has a parameter of distance and it's a number. So now what we need to do is enter our formula so that we tell our function what it is we want it to compute. And again, I'm taking this straight off of page 177. So the formula for computing how many times our ball should turn or the number of revolutions that we want our ball to, to perform is uh, distance divided by pi, which is 3.14 times the ball's width. So let's build that function. So let's say we want to do our expression. We're going to take distance, and this is the parameter that we're passing in. We are going to divide that by a number, which is not represented. So we'll say other, and we're going to do 3.14, which is pi. Say OK. And pi is going to be multiplied times. For now, I'm just going to use 1 as a placeholder. And what we want to do is go find the function for toy ball that tells us what the width of the ball is. So that's toy ball's width. We're going to drag that over and replace the one. And that is our formula that our function is going to use to tell us how many times the ball needs to turn. Okay, we're going to we're going to send it how far the ball is going to move in the distance parameter. It's going to do this computation for us and then it's going to return the result of this computation right here. That's what that return value is. So that'll take the place of the function in our method. Okay, I am going to close my 
function and what I need to do now is we need to replace this one revolution with the function that we just created. So we can go to expressions and we can say toy ball number of revolutions. So now we have our function. And basically it says distance equals one, right? We're moving one meter, distance equals one. So let's play this and see what it looks like. Okay. I don't know that we're moving far enough to actually see, so let's do this. Let's change, let's go to, we'll say other, let's move three meters and we'll say okay. So we're gonna move three meters so our distance is actually going to change and our distance is now gonna be three. So let's play that. Okay, now we're going really fast. So let's stop the program. And let's say we are going to go for two seconds. Let's say play. Okay, that's not quite right. Now remember we're doing these together, so actually if we set one to two seconds duration, we should probably set them both. And let's play that. Okay. So now it looks like we have a more realistic role. And again, yes, we could have done all that manually and, and put that function or um, that formula in here instead of a function. We could have just written that formula, right? But the idea with this is now as the balls, as the ball changes width, so we could change the size of that ball, we can still use our function. And our function is going to tell us the correct number of revolutions. Um, so it's dynamic. So that is how you create your own function in, uh, in Alice for an object.